Hey guys, Joe, Small Home Off Grid Prepping. Welcome to the channel. So we're talking about generators again. I've been getting um, a lot of comments, and you guys might see your comments posted. I really don't know why we're still having trouble with our comments. Some of them go to where we can just hit publish and we can publish them. Other ones, they stay in private. But I've been getting a um, quite a bit on generator voltage, okay, how to know what voltage to connect to your house. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about the different voltage that your generator will put out. But first, we're going to go over to my panel again, and I'm going to explain a little bit about voltage to you guys. Okay, so we're back at the panel. You guys have seen this panel before. You've seen when we put in the uh, generator inlet. But let me explain what you got going here, okay? This right here is a 20 amp 200 feeder. This also right here is a 20 amp 200 feeder. And this is the neutral, okay? So this panel over here, if you read one feeder, and I'm going to go from the neutral over here to what we would call L1 right over here. And as you see on the meter over there, this is putting out 122 volts, okay? And same thing, if we go to this one over here, this is putting out 122 volts. Okay, well, probably about that, 123. So these are called two legs of 120. So you basically have 120 coming in and 120 coming in. Okay, that's called two legs. Some of these breakers, as you see here, will run on 120 only. Okay, that's it. And these are things that you plug a lamp into, um, a TV into, things like that. Now, other devices in your home, like your dryer, your air conditioner, those are going to take 240. So now when you see when I connect L2 and L1 over here, now you see that we're reading 245 volts, okay? So that is what your generator needs to put out. If you have, some houses will run, um, you know, on lower amperage, but usually not lower voltage. Most of them do run on at least 240. You do have three phase, which we're not going to get into three phase. It's more commercial, but there's older houses that do run on that. But that is basically how your panel is working. You have 120 volts coming in here, 120 volts coming in here. These are both 200 amp feeders, so you see we have a 200 amp service. So being that they're each 100 amps, uh, 200 amps, that does not get combined. Okay, when we talked about the battery voltage on the um, last one, it's kind of the same thing, okay? But we will be getting into load calculations fairly soon. Again, if you've seen the other video, that is the next video coming out. This one we kind of threw in because of the comments we've been getting on um, the voltage. But that one, like I said, subscribe, hit the notification button and that one will be coming out before the end of the week we're thinking more around wednesday today is monday but that is what you need to have your generator doing okay this is 120 this is 120 combined together they put out 240. okay so that's how the power in your house works coming from the electric company like i said that's 240 but if you want to connect the generator to your whole house you have to have a generator that puts out 240 and if you see here this one has a switch is 120 and 240 over here this generator puts out either 120 or 240 okay and i can set it from the switch to what i want if i want 120 which would be one leg um, as you just saw on the panel, which would run, like I said, again, lights, a refrigerator is 120. What is 240 is a stove is 240, um, air conditioners normally are 240, dryers are 240, bigger things like that, okay? But if you have a 120 generator only, you really won't be able to connect it to your entire house the way I showed you guys before, but you will be able to plug in cords and run a refrigerator and stuff like that. But ideally, to connect it to your house, you really want to have a 240 generator. And just explaining, it might not even have a switch over here, but that doesn't mean that it won't be 240. This particular generator um, does have a 120, 240 switch, okay? A lot of them will just be 240, and then you just use the plug that you want. So let's start off with this here. This plug here is a normal plug, okay? It's just like what you guys have in your house. You plug it in, it puts out 120 volts, and you can plug, again, refrigerators into it, TVs into it, whatever. Charging, you can charge off of this and all that, but that is all it will run. 20 amp, 120 circuits, that is it, okay? Um, a lot in your house does run on that, but if you have a well pump, you have things like that that will run on 240, then you want to have that 240 connected, okay? So that's all these are. They're very, very simple, regular outlet, just like what you guys have in your house, okay? Now, when you see one that looks like this here, um, this here is a 120, but this is a 30 amp 120, okay? And this one is designed for connecting um, travel trailers, RVs, things like that, that will run on 30 amps. That's it, okay? Um, some of the comments I've been getting is like one I got, and you guys can see it, this one I was able to publish. Um, the comment bas is basically saying that he has a reset an inlet just like what i have okay with the four prongs but his generator only has three prongs and he was asking me if there's an adapter for you know connecting that and the answer to that is no there is no adapter and the reason there is no adapter is his three prong generator is only putting out 120 volts that's it it's not putting out 240 which you would need to run things in your house the other thing is a lot of the things in your house run on 120 but um, referring back to the panel, I showed you there's two thick wires coming in, okay, each 200 amp feeders. Each of those feeders are connected to different places on the bus bar. Again, going L1, L2, L1, L2. So not all of your 120 amp breakers are going to be fed by the same feeder. So if you want all the outlets in your house to work, 
Some of them will pick up 120 from one of the feeders, and others will pick up 120 from other feed, you know, from the other feeder. So you really have to have 240 anyways. Okay, so an adapter would not work. You wouldn't have anything 240 working. But that is what this outlet is right over here. Okay, this is a 30 amp um, outlet that's made for. It's a 120, and it is made for things like travel trailers. Okay. A um, travel trailer runs on 30 amps, okay? It's 120 amps, 30 amps, whereas if you have a fifth wheel, um, a fifth wheel most likely is going to be 50 amps, okay? And it's going to be a 240 breaker. Um, difference being is there really is not a lot in there that will run on 240. Most fifth wheels I know of don't really have anything that run on 240, which doesn't mean that there isn't some that has something that runs on 240. But what they're doing is they're taking 50 amps, okay, which are 240, which have both legs, L1 and L2, but they're only using them in different places. They're using 120 volts here from L1 and they're using 120 volts here from L2. So usually they are 240 breakers, but everything in there is still gonna run on 120, okay? So that is actually where you'd want this other one we're gonna get into here in a second. But this is what the um, 30 amp is, 120 right here. So you see this just has two little prongs on the bottom, then you have your ground here. This one over here is just a normal plug. You plug a cord into it, plug whatever, just like anything you would do in your house, okay? Now this one over here, this one is the 240. You can see there's actually the big difference between this one and that one, and these are set up a little bit different. They look a little different, uh, but that's it. It's only the look, okay? The difference between this one and the difference between this one is this one has the extra leg, okay? This one here has one hot, one neutral, and one ground, which means, as example, this one here would have L1, neutral, and ground. That's it, okay? So you don't have the second leg, whereas this one over here, the reason you have the fourth prong is now you have L1, L2, neutral, and ground, okay? So this one does put out 240. Um, if you've seen our other video, um, if, if you haven't, I believe it is the one that will start at the end of this video. Just go ahead and click on that at the end. Um, but if you've seen that one, then you've seen basically here how we plug a cord into this, okay? And I made the cord, the SO cord, and then the cord will plug into the... Um, inlet on the side of the house it powers up both legs l1 and l2 and then you have the neutral you have the ground so that is why you have four prongs and example is this one you only have three prongs because this is only 120 it's missing a leg okay you don't have l1 and l2 you only have l1 neutral ground here l1 l2 neutral ground so to power up the panel in your house and to run everything inside of your house you do have to have both legs because again when i showed you guys the panel there is those two thick wires coming in and one powers up one part one powers up both part and then whatever needs to be on 240 is connected to both parts l1 and l2 okay so real real simple i'm not spending a lot of time on this one we are going to be getting into the solar load calculations i'm just kind of throwing this video in here real quick because we have been getting questions on that um you know what is the voltage I need for my generator? How come I only have a three prong on my generator, but everything, when I look at inlets for the whole house, they come in the four prong. Is there an adapter and all that? And again, there is no adapter, but the reason is, is an adapter would not work, okay? It's only powering up part of your panel. So let's say that you have a TV here and you have a light over here and they happen to be on two different legs. If you only power your 120, um, you know, one leg, your light might work, but now your TV has no power or vice versa, okay? So you do have to have both legs, L1 and 2, connected to your home in order for this to work, okay? And that is the difference in these things. Everything else, these other ones here, these are for fuel. Um, I think I was pointing to the wrong one before. This actually is the 120, 240. This is the on and off over here. So this is the one right here. You can see it's 120 and 240. Um, but that's it, guys. We got into this generator before. I explained to you guys why you have the different wattage here. During load calculations, if you don't remember, I've talked about this a couple times, how you can figure amperage based on wattage and voltage. But again, the load calculation video for solar, which is load calculations for electric, is load calculations for electric. Okay? We'll be talking about solar, which means we'll be talking about power cells. Okay? And power cells can be anything. They can be batteries. They can be anything that's storing power, and they do make different kinds for solar. So um, in my case, I'm just using lead acid batteries. But again, when we get into that um, load calculations, which will be coming out within the next couple days. So if you're interested in that and you want to learn how to do load calculations on your home, whether it's for solar or whatever, even if you want to size up a generator and you want to do load calculations to know how much power you need from the generator to run everything you, you, know, you know, want to run, um, subscribe, hit the notification buttons. If you guys like the content we talk about here, go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, but that's it guys generators are very simple I just really wanted to get into the voltage here because I don't want to see anybody making mistakes and going out and buying a generator Bringing it home and then saying well, wait a minute. What do I do? I only have three prongs here Well, that means you bought a 120 volt generator not a 240. That's it. So um, Again guys load calculations will be coming out in the next couple of days. Have a great day. We'll see you then